What's up everyone and welcome! In this episode, we are going to take a look at a powerful botnet called Pink. Well, this botnet sports 12 powerful features including HTTP advertisement injection, system command injection, and the most powerful feature being distributed denial of service attacks. Right now, this botnet is mostly infecting devices in China, but its attacks, its attacks can happen anywhere in the world. So just because the machines that are being infected with the botnet are in China, doesn't mean that any company in the United States or throughout Europe cannot be infected or affected by distributed denial of service attacks. So let's dig in and see what we need to do to protect ourselves from it. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. A botnet named Pink infected over 1.6 million devices, according to security researchers who have been analyzing the malicious network for some time. Pink has been used to launch over 100 distributed denial of service attacks to date, making it the largest botnet that Kihu 360's NetLab security team has observed in the wild for around six years. In case you're not familiar with what a botnet is, botnet is short for robot network. That includes a large cohort of infected devices, often dubbed zombies, that take commands from a hacker. These devices have usually been chosen because they have some sort of exploitable gateway or lack of security provision. Botnets are used because a single actor working with one or two devices will already have their work cut out, and botnets allow you to launch larger assaults such as distributed denial of service attacks, which require numerous devices to create traffic overloads. Hackers, called botmasters in this context, often follow the client-server botnet model, which involves the botmaster controlling the network from a central command and control server. Now, this makes attacks slightly easier to orchestrate, but also easier to detect. The other model, which is called peer-to-peer, -peer, allows every single node in the network to operate as the command module and as a client node, shutting down Part of the peer-to-peer -peer botnet will not necessarily stop or even hamper the bot master. Pink, interestingly, has been found to be using peer-to-peer -peer networks and a command control center for communications. Threats from hackers and botnets have ramped up in the past 18 months, with the rise of hybrid working making it harder for companies to secure all the weak points of their infrastructure. The botnet in question has been named Pink by security researchers after a sample collected at the tail end of 2019 had a number of function names starting with Pink. It is estimated to have infected around 1.6 million people across the globe with the vast majority, and it's 96% of reported cases, loca being located in China. Now this figure denotes the number of devices that are now botnet nodes rather than the number of devices affected by the malicious behavior of Pink. Researchers observed over 103,000 nodes that were still active towards the end of October. The Pink botnet has largely been focused on orchestrated distributed denial of service attacks. Distributed denial of service attacks are often used to overwhelm a network or a server or an organization like a corporate network with an unmanageable amount of traffic, which is also fake traffic, causing it to crash or become unusable, unreachable to genuine visitors or users. Pink has also been inserting advertisements into HTTPS traffic. NetLab, a security research team who've been tracking Pink, describes this process as HTTP message injection, stating that on the victim device, advertising JS scripts will be injected when traffic type is HTTP. Unlike other botnets, the Pink malware is only able to target the MIPS architecture the Pink botnet supports the following set of commands. File download, system command execution, distributed denial of service attacks, or HTTP attacks, and UDP attacks. It can do a scan. Now, the specifics of the scan can be set by the command that starts the scan. It can report the device information, like CPU, system type, memory information, system version, hardware information. It can self-update. It saves a new version to the slash temp slash client folder, and then runs that new version. It can do PHP, uh, P2P node list synchronization, which is pushing a set of P2P nodes directly to the bot. It can do HTTP message injection. Now, on the victim device, advertising JS scripts will be injected when traffic type is HTTP. 
it can set up a SOX5 proxy service. It sets up the SOX5 proxy service on the bot side, and the account and password is set by the command to set up the SOX5 proxy. It can download a file and execute it. It can stop an attack, and it can reset Watchdog. Pink has been breaking into computers in China to add devices to its network, exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities in network gateways of broadband devices produced by specific corporations, in this case, MIPS. Again, 96% of the infections are happening in China. NetLab explained further in a blog post that Pink targets mainly the MIPS-based fiber router and has very strong and robust architecture. It uses a combination of third-party services, P2P, and central command and control servers for its bots to control, uh, to control their communications. This combination has made Pink particularly resilient to takedowns and when device vendors have tried to address the issue, the botnet controller has published various firmware updates for the routers to maintain its control. Other commands allow Pink to, again, download files, scan devices, and launch distributed denial of service attacks. All of Pink's transmission channels that the botmaster uses to communicate with the network are fully encrypted, making it quite hard to prevent devices from being subsumed into the network. So, what can we learn from this? Firstly, if you're in control of an MIPS router, then you already probably know about this botnet, and hopefully you have patched any vulnerabilities in the system so that pink cannot infect you. In addition, just as a base security principle, you should be scanning your system for botnets in general and monitoring your temp slash client folder for sus or temp or and temp client folder for suspicious activity, you know, checking for known fingerprints of malicious files, etc. Now, that takes care of being infected with the botnet and becoming a, a node or a zombie in this botnet, but how do you protect yourself against actually the malicious activity of these botnets, which would be a distributed denial of service attack? Now, in recent news, ransomware gangs have begun employing distributed denial of service attacks against victims of ransomware in an effort to get them to pay the ransom. So, having protection against distributed denial of uh, service attacks is growing even more important. There are numerous services that provide DDoS protection, including Cloudflare. Now, Cloudflare has been in the news a lot lately because they have successfully blocked some of the largest distributed denial of service attacks. In fact, the latest one being the blocking of a 2 terabyte per second attack by only 15,000 bots. So, if you look at how many bots Pink has versus the largest attack to date, which is 2 terabytes per second of traffic sent to a system, from only 15,000 bots, and these bots were running a variant of the original Mirai code on exploited IoT devices. So, having this kind of protection for your website or for your, your corporate network is extremely important nowadays. So, check out the best solution for yourselves. I don't work for any of these companies, so I can't tell you what your company needs or the level of protection your company needs. That's something you have to do on your own. With that, I say thanks for watching, don't forget to share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.